Good morning. Oh. Good morning. Hi. Uh, thank you for the introduction there. Um, so I'm going to be talking to you a little today about uh, a site that Guard Archaeology, a company I work for, has just uh, finished up excavating uh, in uh, Leslie in Fife. Um, this is a site that began as uh, archaeological evaluation, making work just to the north of Skeen Quarries. This was commissioned by Skeen Quarries in order to uh, fulfil their archaeological planning consent uh, in advance of extension to their sand and gravel quarry. I'll show you the location of the site there. You can see Leslie and River Leven just to the south there. Uh, the site lies at about 130 metres above sea level. Uh, to the north, you can see the Lomond Hills there, quite prominent peak of East Lomond Hill, the site is just down here, slightly lower lying ground here. You can see the quarry just to the south there as well. So as I say, this began as uh, an archaeological trenching evaluation across the entirety of the site. I'll just show you the shape of the site there, in red there. So we dug trenches across the entirety of the site. Um, and there's one of our trenches. The water comes free. That's our usual working conditions there but thankfully it was very well drained site sand and gravel that's why they're mining there so we could get to work pretty quickly this is the sort of things we were uncovering in the trench not very deep uh you see this circular um truncated post hole here uh so from this single feature that we found in what we're calling area d i'll show you the site map there see area d up here we began to expand around it. We thought that was archaeological signif archaeologically significant, so we expand an area around to see if it constitutes uh, any more uh, extensive archaeological remains. And this is what we found in Area D. Doesn't look particularly impressive at the moment, but just wait. Uh, you can see our trench there, just up here. So this is where we found the postal in Area D. And uh, we found this ring of similar features, not very deep at all, like 20 to 30 centimetres in depth. Uh, but what we think we probably have here is a post ring. If I do this, you might see a bit what I'm talking about. Uh, obviously truncated partially by our trench, uh, and so possibly an incomplete post ring that we have here, about eight posts, I think, um, in the ring there. Um, so this is our, our conjecture that we have here for our post ring. Uh, also notice there's this projection uh, extending out about a metre and a half to the southeast as well. So if we go by our surviving evidence, this post ring, we're looking at a structure of a diameter of about six metres with an internal floor uh, area of about 28 metres square. The posts are roughly equidistant, although slightly closer together towards the front. Um, what the working hypothesis at the moment is that this is the interior post ring of uh, a roundhouse structure. Um, and this is the surviving evidence that we have. You hear this a lot through it, uh, the, my presentation, but there was a lot of truncation across the site. Uh, this is an area of land that's been in agricultural use for uh, a couple of centuries at least. Um, and in, indeed, across the site, and in particularly in this area, uh, we found plough marks in the subsoil. So it looks as though this has been uh, quite seriously truncated. So this is the lowest portion of a structure, we believe. Um, so what we're assuming is that there may be, uh, there may have been more to this structure, more structural elements that have been ploughed away uh, over the years. So this may have actually been a much uh, larger structure. We're assuming it's the interior post ring. If I show you that, this is a, a, a roundhouse from Aberdeenshire on the East Coast um, with its interior post ring and then the proposed outer wall there. So we think we might have the interior post ring of a, a roundhouse structure. If we, apologies, if we assume that it has been truncated, this could have been a much larger um, uh, structure. If we go ejection there, 
the outermost post uh, and assume that that's the maximum. Um, I think we're looking more about 10 meters, which is slightly nicer, less pokey. This is the projecting feature that we have extending out to the southeast. Uh, in the literature, these are often referred to as porches, um, and this is often thought to represent an entranceway to the structure. It's about a meter wide, really narrow, projects about one and a half meters from this, uh, this post string here. Um, there wasn't too many uh, internal features to the structure. Um, I, oh, apologies. Yeah, there's relatively few internal features that could really allow us to interpret uh, kind of what was going on in this structure or any of the sub possible subdivisions within the structure, uh, unfortunately. And um, uh, yeah, so we, we kind of have to refer to um, other examples of these structures in order to kind of try and intuit what was going on here. There was this possible post hole in the roughly the center of the of the uh, structure. Uh, you can see it's a bit off center. Actually, it was a uh, kind of a on the fly interpretation of what this could be. Um, it's a bit skew with, and we don't really want to force this into being uh, a structural element. Um, in a lot of other examples of this kind of uh, structure, it doesn't require a central post hole. Uh, a central post, sorry, it's not an integral structural element, uh, but it's, it's, it's possible. I should say that no, none of the post X has been done on this project, so this is really just preliminary uh, results that we're discussing today. So I'll take you to another, uh, oh, I should say there was actually very little uh, artifactual evidence recovered um, so far uh, during the excavation phase uh, of this structure. Obviously, it's been all these postals have been sampled, so hopefully we can get a bit more information from uh, flotation and uh, other soil analysis. Um, uh, materials, perhaps. These are often thought to uh, have been wooden posts, potentially with uh, wattle and daub, or possibly pre-fabric um, wooden panels. Although, as I say, if we're correct that this is a a roundhouse structure, it appears that we've lost quite a lot of the uh, the exterior wall of the structure. I'll take you to a different part of the site, um, to area E, which is just up here. In this part of the site, there was a, a single trench that we found a thin curvilinear. We decided to investigate that by expanding around. And I'll show you a bit of what we uncovered in there. Um, so we have these two structures, we believe, uh, these concentric ring grooves. Uh, the one that you can see in the forefront of the photo there is the more complete uh, structure, we believe, the one up to the, the upper left there, uh, we suspect has been uh, ploughed out quite significantly. Um, so our, our working hypothesis at the moment is that these are round house structures. Uh, we're not entirely certain of date, Similar to structure one, we didn't find actual material that we could do spot dating of, unfortunately. Um, but that could change with, with further analysis. Or we, we were thinking, as we were digging this, we are thinking that this possibly could be uh, of uh, later prehistoric date. This is a plan uh, of the uh, groups that we uh, found. Uh, in terms of the, the rough phasing that we managed to gain uh, from the excavation, it would appear that structure two, which is this one here, is the earlier of intersection that you can see up here. Uh, and from that, we've uh, found a graphic relationship suggesting that, uh, at the very least, this outer ring of what up there uh, is the is the later. So it appears we have structure two, structure three, and then obviously uh, the latest, the, the field drain, which the farmers kindly cut through uh, our structure. So you, you can uh, kind of register the structure. 
plan uh, as opposed to the, the distinct structure three, which there's been no conjecture gone into that, uh, but it appears to be more circular uh, in form. I'll uh, show you a little, sorry, this is the internal diameter uh, of the ring groove, so about 7.7 .7 with a slightly lower floor space of 48 meters square. I'll show you some of the, this is just a section of the, the ring groove, the internal ring groove. Uh, very, very shallow, um, the um, 0 0.15 of a meter there is pretty generous, so over most of it, it was very shallow indeed. Um, Again, our working interpretation is that it's probably been dug quite significantly. It's standard U-shape uh, profile. Uh, there was no kind of structural elements that we could see uh, within the ring group, no stake holes, post holes, or uh, packing stones or anything like that that would suggest, um, that would give us an indication of um, what kind of um, structure would have been here. The external ring group had a very similar uh, profile. There was very little to distinguish it from the interior um, ring groove here, unfortunately, and again, not very much. A similar U-shaped profile, uh, no packing stones in evidence um, throughout any of the ring groove. Unfortunately, not very much artifactual evidence um, gained from this. We excavated about 25% of these ring grooves, so it's been fully sampled, hopefully with uh, some post-ex analysis. Uh, maybe we'll get some finds recovery or uh, ecofat recovery that could help us um, uh, figure out what was going on here. There was some interesting features of the structure. There's some possible recutting here. Uh, you can see that the uh, one section of the interior ring group here appears to diverge off. Uh, we did try to get the stratigraphic relationship here. Unfortunately, the fills between uh, the two parts were, were too similar to uh, kind of gain any stratigraphic relationship between them. But it appears there has been some recutting here, which is possibly indicative of extension of the structure or possibly repair uh, of the structure. It's difficult to say at the moment. We do have one parallel. Uh, so this is a structure from uh, Aberdeenshire, again, uh, a roundhouse structure, much better preserved roundhouse structure, um, that shows this kind of expansion, repair, and modification of the, of the structure. In this case, they did actually have very good stratigraphic relationships between these concentric ring grooves that did show that the structure was uh, being rebuilt and expanded over the years. Oh, uh, so that was one theory of what this uh, external ring groove could possibly be. Uh, possibly some some distinct structural element, possibly a policy. That was one of the things ideas that was floated on site. Unfortunately, they're so similar the uh, the ring grooves that it's actually kind of uh, difficult to say. It's not distinct enough from the interior ring groove to can it really give it a, a good suggestion of what its function could be. So possibly some re uh, rebuilding of a structure, uh, of a structure or something uh, similar. This is a similar site, a roundhouse structure that did have a palisade um, around the uh, its southern extent. Except in this case, they did have pretty good evidence that there was a palisade, there was um, significant packing stones uh, and larger post holes that would suggest that this is a distinct function to the ring groove uh, you can see just to the north there. Uh, very few internal features that we could see. Um, there was, we assume we have an entrance uh, to the southeast, similar to structure one oriented to the southeast. This is a pretty standard thing with. Um, the roundhouses of the later prehistoric Bronze Age uh, period, um, possibly for fairly prosaic reasons of letting light into the structure. Uh, we did have this stake hole here, which has been proposed. Maybe some sort of uh, trins fitting. Uh, they found similar things at this same site at, at Peterhead, uh, these stake holes at the terminus of the uh, proposed entrance. Uh, so that, that's a potential 
um, we need to kind of figure that out and um, the levels of truncation we've got on this. If we're assuming that there's a high level of truncation, that it's obliterated uh, internal features or a lot of the internal features, then it's possibly unlikely that we'd get something like the surviving, but hopefully this will, will come out in the in the wash once we've had a better look. This is the main internal feature uh, we had in the uh, southwest of the structure. I had a fire pit here, unambiguous uh, fire pit. Um, in roundhouse structures, they're often centered, the, the hearth. Uh, this is obviously not centered, this is uh, off to, to one side. So possibly suggesting some uh, subdivision within the structure, uh, which can possibly be um, elaborated on in our uh, post X analysis. I'll show you some of the pictures of the hearth. Uh, so you can see the, the in situ burning there from our section, just the black um, deposit there. Um, notice in the forefront of the picture as well, we've got the circular feature, um, which we're unsure of the function of that uh, at the moment, but if you look here, it's kind of ovular in form. It's got a deep pit to the uh, northwest, and it's got a shallow lip extending out to the uh, southeast with this postal here. You can maybe perhaps see it there as well. Um, so there's been a few interpretations of what this could be. Obviously we have a fire pit. It's possibly related to the raking out of material, uh, the removal of material from the fire pit. Um, or if we, if we go with the theory that there's been a lot of truncation in the site, it could have been a more substantial feature. Um, possibly some kind of kiln feature, we're not entirely sure. There wasn't that much artifactual, artifactual evidence recovered from this, although we did find some possible uh, um, metal working waste, I believe. I haven't actually set eyes on it, but uh, this is what I'm told uh, was recovered from it. So you can see the, the institute burning there uh, with the postal, sorry, that could possibly be a structural element to a much larger feature, uh, which has been um, <coughs> obliterated by by ploughing. Characteristic soil reddening there within the, uh, the deeper portion of the, of the pit. You can see the ovular form of the pit there, the much shallower lip that extends from the main fire pit. So I'll take structure three. This is the later of the structure. As I said, there's quite a lot of conjecture gone into this. Uh, very similar ring grooves, similar U-shaped profile. Uh, again, no structural elements um, were encountered during this. 25% we excavated of this, um, so a fair portion of it. Didn't find any postal stake holes or uh, chalking stones or anything like that to uh, suggest what kind of structure could have been, uh, this, could have, this could represent. Uh, so as I've been saying through this, we assume that there might be a pretty high level of truncation but, uh, across these structures, uh, but Nevertheless, we did do some chemical, well, we're going to do some chemical analysis. Uh, we did systematic sampling across the interior of the features. Um, and uh, once the, the post-ex project gets ongoing, we'll do some chemical analysis of the, the soil. Uh, hopefully this can help kind of elaborate on what was going on in these structures. Um, we assume there's been a loss of floor layer so we think the actual occupation layer has probably been removed, but it's fairly well-drained soil, so if there's been percolation of chemicals into the soil, then perhaps we can pick up the signatures that will help us uh, try and understand what's going on in these structures. So they're the, the main structures, the, the main three structures that we discovered uh, on site that we believe are possibly of prehistoric date. Um, our uh, radiocarbon dating will, will help to substantiate that interpretation. Um, uh, in the future. We'll take you to a slightly different part of the site. So this, this large area of the site in area BC, uh, we had lots of very scattered features, lots of very erratic arrangements of, of pits. Uh, they didn't look particularly promising when we were, were digging them, but this is where we found the artifactual evidence uh, in these kind of pit clusters. Um, no real kind of structural, uh, we can't see any kind of real evidence of a structure here. But what we do have is evidence of in-situ burning uh, in this part of the site. Uh, 
appears to be less truncated in this part of the site. Um, certainly less plough scars visible in the subsoil. Uh, we had this in situ burning layer. Doesn't appear to be a particularly deep feature. It appears to be fairly ephemeral. There was no evidence of a stone setting for a hearth or anything uh, to that effect. Although perhaps using this uh, stone here uh, as, a, as a windbreak for their, for their fire. But yeah, it appears to be a fairly ephemeral structure. Um, and from that, we did actually find some artifactual evidence. Um, several shards of ceramic, which uh, we tentatively think of, uh, of the, the Neolithic period, um, appears to represent more than one vessel, it doesn't appear to be an interment of a vessel or anything like that, so um, probably broken vessels that have just been accumulating in this uh, pit, uh, or swept in, or, or something like that. Um, the, notice the, the uh, fingernail impressions, semi-lunar impressions in the, the rim shard there. Um, but yeah, we, t we tentatively think that these are of the, the Neolithic period. Obviously, when we have um, the ceramic specialists look at this, they will to um, tell us a bit more about these. There's another pit cluster that we got from uh, very close by, 20 metres to the, to the oh, east. Yep. Oh, sorry. No worries. Uh, <laughs> No worries, that's fine. Uh, so we, we, this is about 20 metres to the east, this uh, pit cluster. Again, no kind of uh, coherence to su suggest a structure, uh, but we did find further uh, ceramic evidence from this. Uh, this appears to represent, um, th this isn't all the, the fragments, there's more, but it appears to represent at least three vessels. Uh, you can see the distinct fabrics of the, the vessels there. Uh, I'll take you very quickly <laughs> to uh, the westernmost area of the site. We found this uh, very shallow linear ditch, uh, it's about 30 centimetres in depth, uh, oriented east-west. Um, I'll show you a picture of it there. Uh, this is the, the shallow ditch. Had this uh, abundance of stones in the fill, and towards the west, you can see it became more coherent into this coherent stone layer. Um, towards the east, it was uh, appeared to um, be uh, very disturbed, there was no coherent layer to it. Um, from this, we found a single single find, this red glazed post-medieval pottery um, and some uh, animal bone as well. So there was, there's been suggestions that uh, it could be older, but we're, I, I suspect that this is a, a post-medieval feature that we're looking at. Um, from this stone layer off to the west, we recovered this rotary quern. Uh, it appears to be broken, and here are some of the uh, uppermost grindstones. Uh, of the rotary quern. Obviously very difficult to date these uh, these artefacts. Um, it, it's a very wide time frame that these can be assigned to, but I, I suspect post-medieval. Post um, underlying that, we had this post alignment here. Uh, it adheres very strongly to the alignment of the what we're calling, uh, what we suspect is the post-medieval ditch uh, deposit. Uh, so I would suspect this is probably a post-medieval feature, actually. Um, it's filled with the same stuff as the deposit comprising the, uh, the, uh, the ditch feature there. So I suspect there's possibly some kind of fence line or something like that. Um, very few artefacts uh, were recovered to actually substantiate that, unfortunately. Uh, there's a lot hinging on that uh, small ceramic fragment. Um, and we had these associated uh, enclosure ditches. Um, that's the working interpretation is that these are enclosure ditches at the moment. Uh, anyway, thank you very much for uh, listening to that. Um, and the, uh, so what can we say about that site? Um, it, this is kind of the stuff we'll often be working with uh, in commercial archaeology and pre-development archaeology. These kind of heavily uh, plough truncated sites. Uh, this is very common. So, just to show you the kind of stuff that you can be that you do uh, work with fairly frequently, uh, these much reduced sites, and just to show that you can gain, uh, or hopefully you can gain, useful information from these sites that might at first. Uh, not appear particularly promising, having been um, damaged by by plow action. Thank you very much.